All right, what's up, everyone? I'm going to go today through DevOps documentation, tools and tactics for your team. So, first of all, the tools. Now, ultimately, the way most people do their documentation is using a wiki. Think about it. What is a wiki? A wiki is like a website designed to be viewed by multiple people, like a team. So you're using it to share written information, sharing knowledge, basically. It's uh, very, very limited in terms of formatting. You can't use a lot of fancy colors or fonts or anything. However, you can link between documents. So yeah, it will support internal and even external links as well. But it's really focused on the content, the clarity of your message. Now, most companies or many companies are using Confluence as part of the Atlassian suite. So think about Jira, which is like a ticket system. Integrates well with Confluence. Both products work well together. There are other ones, but those are the main ones from Atlassian. Now, it used to be you could self-host that, but I believe they're not selling that anymore. The only licenses available now are the cloud-only licenses. So... You know, which is fine. I always prefer that anyway. But for some companies, that may not meet their security requirements. I don't know why, but you know, some companies may insist on self-hosting, perhaps on-prem or something, and uh, Confluence won't do it anymore. So, look, there are some alternatives that are uh, free uh, slash open source. You have got Bookstack and Wiki.js. Now, Bookstack is very similar to Confluence, except you know, it's free, open source, no need to pay for licenses. You can. Inst you have to install this yourself. So both of these have got the whole different options like Linux, Windows, uh, containers, etc., etc. Now, if you really don't want to install and manage that yourself, what you can do as well is the Bookstack website has got links to a number of different hosting providers who have one-click install scripts for many different common applications, including Bookstack. So with one click, you can just install it. It will just install with the default options. Now, it's probably not going to back it up. It's not going to maintain it. It's probably not going to patch it. It might do. It might not. Uh, this is really designed for people who don't know their way around computers. It's not really for real DevOps teams. If you're a real DevOps team, you'll probably just self-host that. So that's Bookstack. Now you've got Wiki.js. Again, it's free, open source. But the difference between Bookstack and Wiki.js is Bookstack is more like Confluence. Wiki.js is more like a regular wiki, like Wikipedia. But it's still super popular. And also, again, you've got to self-host it. You've got all those options. Now, there's no one-click for Wiki.js. It's kind of different. Well, there may be, but I'm not aware of any. Now, what you can do, though, with Wiki.js is there are places you can go where websites are running this software to host wikis for multiple different people or teams. So you go to these websites and you click New Wiki. And bam, you can start creating your own wiki straight away. Now, it will show you, if you go here, it will show you paid options. It will show you free options, some of which are ad-supported, some of which are not ad-supported. Now, obviously, the free ones, you don't know how long they're going to they're gonna last for. The paid ones, you're probably going to have a contract with them. They're not just going to disappear overnight. So that's the difference. Bookstar's got one-click installs, wiki.js. There are people out there who are using it, and you can use them to create a wiki on now, those are wikis. Obsidian, you may have heard of, this is more of a personal knowledge base. It's not really designed to be shared with other people. It's more of a personal note-taking software. It's got a lot of plugins that are supported for it. Uh, you could do things like back, you know, you work on it locally. It uses markdown files under the hood. You can put them in a hierarchical order. You can interlink them, uh, like we talked about before for wikis. These plugins allow you to like back up to Dropbox or to OneDrive and do all kinds of other crazy, really quite interesting stuff if if you want to go that way. Then you've also got web-based, which I don't really consider documentation tools, but they can do documentation as well as many other things. So Notion, I'm sure everybody knows about. And then you've even got like Google Docs, which is kind of like Microsoft Office, but in the Google version. So, you know, you can share documents that way. Multiple people can edit, but it's kind of old school. Notion is a lot more powerful, a lot more modern. But again, it's not really like wiki software. Notion allows you to do things as well, like you can have like private documents that you can share but you can also publish to a, to become a static website so that may be something you want to think about for documentation but yeah I would rather go with a wiki to be honest so here's my opinion right the, the main thing is 
lots of companies, they have documentation, very limited. They're always trying to encourage team members to do it, but a lot of people don't want to do it. Don't want to use the word lazy, but they just don't want to do it. And even if they do, they're very poorly maintained. The documents become aged very quickly, and no one wants to, no one wants to update them. Somebody leaves, no one updates the document, you know, from the person who left, even becoming Confluence unknown users. So, look, you want to make it as friction-free experience as possible. You want to make it quick and easy to make a note. Even if it's just a partial, you just paste some info, or whether you want to work and, and work a bit longer and make a, a nice draft or a version one and then share it with a colleague and get a some kind of uh, opinion on it. So, look. There's a choice between, and I'm already kind of already talking about this, a simple solution or heavy customization. So obviously with the wiki, you're accepting some limitations. There's no fonts. There's, I don't think, highlighting. There's not good support for diagramming typically. Uh, you may be able to have a few global plugins. I've seen this for Confluence. The whole company can use some plugins. But in general, it's still a pretty simple experience. What you don't have, like with Obsidian, is what I'm hinting here, is masses and masses of individual plugins. And, you know, you, don't, you just don't want that. You want a simple experience. You want people to focus on the clarity of the message instead of getting bogged down with customizing and fancy colors and highlighting. Although we used to do that a long time ago, you know, web pages may, may kind of have a lot of fancy UI and stuff. Really, if it's just knowledge sharing, you want to actually go back to basics. It's all about the core. Concentrate on having a simple message. There are people with learning difficulties as well, like dyslexia. It's not going to be good to have all this fancy formatting. Keep it simple, make it friction free and easy to use so people don't have to think, oh, I need to make my document, you know, look really fancy or no one's going to read it. No, you just don't even give them the options, okay? So my recommendation is start with Markdown. It's simple, it's limited, and that's what you want. And use your IDE that you're already using, whether it's for your Terraform, your Bash, your Python, or whatever. Use the same editor to create your files. Save them locally and periodically push them to a remote repo. Don't get obsessed about always pushing. You want it to be friction-free, easy experience, okay? Maybe you can even have a script that will just push all your updates at the end of the day to the repo. Don't be too overly concerned about that. The main thing is friction-free. Use whatever tool you're already using for editing. Now, if you do have a preference for the web for editing, you can just do this on GitHub. But I would recommend them to use some kind of shortcut on your browser toolbar or on your desktop so that you can get to your document super quick. You find, use it even like an edit URL or something. So it's a one click and bam, you're in. The, the more you have to click through folder, go to github.com and click your repo and click through the folders and all that, you know, this is going to prevent you from actually making documentation and your team as well. You may even, if you prefer, consider writing gists as a starting point, you know, and just is like paste bin, you, it's just a paste, so you may go to like Reddit or LinkedIn, you see something, you copy it, yeah, I want, I want to write a document or, or I want to upload this in our documentation later. If you go to open Notion and find the document and, and wait for the page to load because Notion is CPU and memory intensive, it's not going to happen. If you've got a, a link on your browser that will take you directly to editing a GitHub page or, at, or creating a new gist, then that's what you want to do and then all you've got to do is paste and two seconds after copying you can be pasting that into a document instead of 15 seconds later. How about templates by the way? Some people think a template is a way to magically make their documentation happen. No, a template is, you know, don't worry about that. Less is more. Do it yourself to start with. Forget about templates as you go as you go along and your documentation skills develop. You will end up making your own templates to save time anyway. Forget about that in the beginning. No templates good it's like people get obsessed with resumes and CVs, right? And they think, oh yeah, I need a I need a really great template or I need someone to do my C V or resume for you. No, you know, just start simple, start it yourself. It's the same with documentation. So anyway, here you go. Probably you're gonna have confluence. And if you don't want to pay for it, recommend you use Bookstack. And if not, maybe consider Wiki. But Bookstack is better. And Obsidian, I don't personally go down that route. Per don't let perfection be the enemy of good. You can't really use this in a team. And even on a personal level, try it if you want. If you love note-taking, get into it. But I don't really don't recommend it, okay? It's just too much. It's just too much in my opinion. And web-based, yeah, it's a little bit too much friction. It's not really for documentation. It might be there already. You might already be using it. Mm, yeah, I recommend just getting a wiki. Just do it properly, okay? 
you know, or just start with GitHub. Just start with Markdown and GitHub. That's what I advise. So I hope you like this. Please give it a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel. We're growing. Really appreciate it. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.